Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm doing these interviews with YouTubers are pretty much doing the same thing as me. So today we've got Joey from Joey Retro Handouts. He's doing some interesting stuff. So uh, I'm sure the guys who have tuned in know what he's been up to. We're both kind of very similar from different sides of the same coin. So it'll be interesting to see what we have to say today. Cool, hey Joey, I don't know if you want to sort of introduce yourself, if you have a few things you want to say before we start. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, if you haven't heard of me, Joey's Retro Handhelds, and I do a lot of what Aiden does, same thing, setup guides, emulation tutorials, reviewing retro handhelds, all that fun stuff. So yeah, we play in the definitely play in the same space, but the one thing that I've kind of come to notice about everybody in our space is it's collaborative instead of everybody mm. at each other's throats which is fantastic so exactly yeah, um, yeah that, that's me in a nutshell i realized that you and i are the ultimate guide guys we've we've both <laughs> uh, i just know our, our titles for our guides are the ultimate guide to this the ultimate guide to that and we uh, i realized we both have been doing that i don't know if it was accidental or if we accidentally saw each other's titles or what happened but we've definitely no, been doing the same thing. I had no idea. Um, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. I, I, I picked it because I'm like, usually when people are searching for things and they see ultimate guide, they're like, yes. yeah, I want that one. Um, yeah. And so you have to play that that YouTube algorithm game a little bit. Exactly. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I, just kept, I just kept rolling with it because it worked. Yeah, but that is it. like when, when I think of a title, I try to think of something punchy. And I've been watching a few guys that do YouTube sort of analytics and all that. And... Um, you know, instead of saying best, say ultimate, or instead of saying broken, say exploded or whatever, like use sort of extreme yeah. language. And it does work. I mean, my ultimate RG35XX guide is my best performing video. Well, I mean, I mean I'm not saying it's because of the word ultimate, but it has done very well. <laughs> Yeah, I saw. I was looking at it the other day. But yeah, I mean, I can't use emulation beast because ETA Prime took that one. So we have to come up with other words like ultimate yeah. and, and anything else yeah. that'll pop yeah. up. Well, yeah, I, f I feel like I'm, I'm starting to think that we need to sort of us guys or sort of 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 subscribers. We need to start like riding off the coattails of those guys because, yeah, I mean, they've they've kind of been the trailblazers and now they've left this path for us to follow. So. Um, I don't think there's any shame in in copying them and and learning from them because like creativity is basically copying and then putting your own spin on it, you know. Yeah. What what I found to work for me is is I look at other videos that are not in our niche and like just random throughout YouTube. Like yesterday, I went down mm. the rabbit hole of a camera because I'm I wanted to upgrade my camera, okay. and yeah. I'm watching all these creators for cameras and seeing what they're doing on reviewing cameras and and all that. And I'm like, I could take that and I like that and and. And then you just kind of add it on to what you do. But yeah, I mean, there's only so many ways you can review a handheld with, between everybody looking similar, but it's the shot, it's the the content, all of that is, is the difference, mm. I think. But yeah, <laughs> definitely, there's a lot to learn from a lot of different people. Yes. And, and I mean, that brings me on to one of my questions is, so I discussed this with RetroBreeze. Uh, him and I did a video on the X28, and I think it's the only video we agree on. Like every single device that I've watched of his and me, we we basically, you know, for instance, if I say the joysticks are great, he'll be like, they're absolutely the worst joysticks ever. And I'll be like, it's a terrible D-pad. And he'll be like, this is the nicest D-pad I've ever used. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously there, there's a middle ground and, you know, at some point somebody's wrong, but I do think it's nice that guys can find content creators that they can relate to. So for instance, I'll find people who go, you know, I've been looking everywhere and you made the point that I was looking for. And it's because we're all looking at it from a different perspective and a different requirement, a different use case, you know. So I'm, I'm a bit more of a, like a, a sort of a, I'm not the, the sort of extreme gamer type. And so that's the mindset I come to this with. And, and so I have it, and, and I'm a bit older. So um, that brings a whole different sort of flavor to it, you know. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's the same with your videos, watching your videos, we, we bring a different flavor to it. And I think that's what makes it nice. Yeah. Uh one of the things that when I first started reviewing or, or jumping in, and it wasn't even that long ago now, it was more of a, I, I realized that a lot of a lot of people were were really positive on a lot of devices. And it's like, mm. there's a lot of negatives in certain devices. Like I, I've been reviewing yeah. Pow Kitty devices now and I still haven't found one I like, but it's whenever I do those reviews and I'm like, this is like, these things are deal breakers and it it's really a, an issue. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't like being 
kind of overly positive on everything. And I know why people do it. It's it's better for the algorithm. Yeah. It's better for all that sort of thing. But I, I like to come in from a more kind of critical view of it and say like, yeah, there's a lot good about this device, but here's the real big deal breakers and why I really don't see why you would buy it. And mm. um, we're going to disagree. So now, because I know um, you have this with RetroBee, so we're going to disagree on the the X55 for Pow Kitty because I just okay. reviewed that one. And I'm like, I I don't get it. Like I don't I don't know what it is about this device that are, <laughs> that people like it. But but it's an example, right? Like it's just because yeah. um, then Russ. Uh, from Retro Game Core will say that it's the best device under ninety dollars, and yeah. and we all have these different kind of opinions, and and yeah, um, people that are watching our content will kind of gravitate gravitate to whoever has the opinions that kind of match their own, and and kind of follow them that way. But yeah, I, I kind of took the approach of like I, I just need to be critical about these devices because it it seems to be uh, a space that not a lot of people are really going like hard in on like why why are we still doing this? like why do we have such bad d-pads after years of being a manufacturer yeah. like things like that is just kind yeah. of adds up yeah I, I think what you're saying there also there, there's been a bit of a like for instance when i started with this i was new to it and fresh to a lot of the concepts and so when i started making videos everything was just amazing and and i know for for instance with like retro game call with russ like i know he really blew up in the beginning and he was in that stage where everything was just incredible. And then I remember there was a point he was like, everyone's telling me I just love everything. So I'm going to point out the bad things in this device. And it, I, I can't remember where it was. Cause I mean, I pretty much watched everything of Russ's up, um, up until sort of the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think there was just that, you know? And so I may, maybe all of us are starting to realize that and go, okay, well there's a, there's a bit of space now for us to go, Let's be a bit more critical. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Because I, I, I feel the same thing is happening with Retro Breeze. Like he's, he's, he's feeling like, okay, I think I need to bring a bit more criticism to the space. Yeah, and maybe that's it. There's a lot of devices out there, and and not all of them are worth your money, and and especially with kind of how things are going in the world. Like you have to be a bit more conscious with what you're spending money on, and yeah, and people who are tuning into us are like, I want to hear what their thoughts are because we have a lot of handhelds and they can give a, a good kind of idea of what's worth your money, what isn't worth your money. And so that that's kind of the approach that I like to take because, I mean, probably like you, a lot of the devices that I get, I'm still purchasing with my own money. I, I still get some for review, but a lot of them I'm buying on my end. So like when I buy the the retro pocket three metal edition and and i don't like it it's like a big bummer so like i feel like i'm somebody that who had just purchased it and doesn't like it and yeah. so that's how i take the review on of, of doing that review in that way where i think when you get review units a lot of the times and, and you kind of get disconnected from having to spend your own money for something that it's process, a bit different yeah. of a yeah it's a bit different of a feeling right and, and so i try and capture that a little bit but no uh like you i came into this with zero Da Vinci Resolve experience, zero filmmaking experience, <laughs> zero yeah. anything. Like I've been using, I've been using my phone to to do all of my my videos. That's all I've been using, and then I bought like lights, and all that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's only gonna get better as you progress. But at the yeah. at the end of the day, like it's about the it's about the message and the, and the, the content. So like the cameras yeah. are secondary, really. Like I I just have a passion for filmmaking. It's what I do in my like for my business so it just spills okay, over yeah. to this but like really i i could just get a you know a canon m50 just a basic camera and, and just go for it um and it wouldn't be any different like for instance right now i'm filming on a cinema camera on raw video <laughs> which is just ridiculous <laughs> Just because I love it, but, but like I said before, your 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 content is um is unique. Like I I know when I'm watching an, an Aiden video because there's oh, cool. like your whole cinematic, your whole mm. like thing. Like you have a the color grading down, you have everything down, and it's like man, I wish I can get to that consistency because yeah. every video you open is is like it's you like it's it's all you. Um, oh, cool, and that's uh, awesome th to see. Thanks for that feedback. <laughs> that that actually feels great because uh, today I was thinking to myself I haven't built a brand I need to build more of a brand because I've been watching some like Mr. Beast and a few other guys that are, are big and they're all like you know they've built an awareness of what they look like as soon as you see the thumbnail so I appreciate that thanks it, that, that's a tough one I, I'm still struggling with that too but but yeah no definitely I like like your videos have like even your intro mm. like it's just it there's the consistency there that um, oh, cool. I'm trying to get to and, and it's awesome to see that you have that down pat basically <laughs> 
Yeah, but I mean, like with you, I think um, your your logo is very strong, and your sort of brand package that you've put together is pretty strong. So I mean, that that's definitely working for you. Um, where, like you say, you're filming with the phone, and that is what you're doing. But I definitely know it's you as soon as I'm there because of the brand awareness of the the blue and the little logo you've made. It it all definitely builds on the thing. Thanks. Well, we'll see. I have a new camera coming today, so we'll see how that goes. It's the um, the yeah. Sony ZV E10, which is like the, I think everybody has one. So um. yes, I think Retro Breeze is getting one as well. Yeah. Oh, is he? Okay, I'll reach out to him because. Uh, yes. Yeah. You must message him and ask him. I wanted to talk about that now because, like, I, I think. I mean, we're just chatting about YouTube, but I think guys who are going to tune in now are will we'll be interested in knowing our process because I thought of this today. So the, the one problem with receiving devices for free, and that this is where I had a, a criticism of guys getting too critical at one the, the other day. I don't know what sort of content I was. I just I think it was more general tech that I was watching, and how guys get a little bit. Like they get so used to getting high-end tech and then forget that, you know, the lowly MiU Mini Plus is still a wonderful device, you know, and they, they get so super critical. Yeah. It's so small and plasticky and what a piece of trash, you know. But the, the, the opposite of that is also true. So I realized today I got a device that I got for free and I didn't have the buyer's experience. And so I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like as my channel grows, I feel, I feel like I'm going to be purchasing more of my devices um, and and be I'm going to be quite reluctant to get into any firstly brand deals and then just getting devices for free because I feel like it's it stops me from being a good tech reviewer I don't know how you feel about it it, it's it's a good question because it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about um, when you get the devices for free, you, you do kind of get taken out from that buyer's experience of you didn't physically hand that money, so you you lose yes. that sort of um, feeling, I guess, of of what it is. I, I think if. I think it all depends on if you can throw yourself in that mindset afterwards and, and just assume that, hey, you know what? I paid money for this. I'm going to review yeah. it as if I paid money for it. And it, it might be tough for everybody to kind of do that, but um, that's how I try and do it for the devices that I've received for uh, for free, like for, for review. Because mm. um, it's like the Pow Kitty, for example, the X55, if I would have paid for that, I wouldn't have been happy, and and so that's how I took that review of and and kind of made it my own. Um, but yeah. it, it is definitely something that as you go along, it's going to be something to think about. And and I think in this space specifically, the one you see this a lot with the Ioneo devices, as well as like the GPD Win fours and and the higher end kind of Windows devices, because you're like, man, a, a lot of these guys are saying this is the best device, this is fantastic, all of that, mm -hmm. but. It's a it's a thousand dollars U.S. It's shipping from China. It has no support for warranty. All of these sort of things that, like, if you were in a reviewer, would you have bought this? And my answer is probably going to be no, because <laughs> yeah. I'm not buying it. Um, like, I have yeah. a GPD Win 4 coming now that I got used. Okay, but that was. Um, but even that, I'm like, I'm biting my nails of like, hey, if something goes wrong, I'm in trouble. <laughs> like, this thing's a lot of money. Um, yeah. So, yeah, th I, I definitely have that sort of feeling as well. And, and it's just, I think, maybe uh, putting yourself in that space so that you can get around it. Um, but the, the, the budget devices have been fantastic this year. Like, the, the Retro mm, Pocket 2S, the Miu, um, the RG35XX, like, we're we're eating well when it comes to budget handhelds right now. <laughs> so, it's yeah. been good to see I'm thinking about revisiting the RG35XX um, just because it has progressed so well. And uh, I need to make a video about the 353VS, which is getting old now already. So I thought of comparing it to the RG35XX and see, you know, kind of give a bit of advice, advice on, you know, is it worth even spending that money when the RG35XX is so good? And yeah, so anyway, so I, what I wanted to say was, so for example, I've got these two devices in front of me and I'm, I'm about to launch a video on it and it's the RG405M and then the Retro Pocket 3 Plus Metal version. And I reached that point Perfect. where I thought to myself, because I've kind of made my mind up that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait a while till I go on to the, the, the high-end devices, sort of the $250 plus devices. So I'm going to stick around the sub $250 bracket for a while. And I, and I thought to myself, you know, getting this to South Africa, it's, it's almost $250 for, for one of these devices. It's, it's about $230 with shipping because it's $50 for shipping. 
Jeez. Okay. So, um, so like I made the videos and I, I, I thought to myself, and I said in the video, I've got to be way more critical of these devices because these companies are asking a lot of money and you're reaching sort of AY and Odin light bracket of pricing for a device that's less powerful um, and uh, it's you pay paying for the nice metal, you know? And so I made, I, I was quite critical like, cause I think everyone raved about the RG405M and uh, I kind of said, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I do like, but anyway, so just on that note, you know, I think um, Go Game Geek gave me this and that's why it took so long to make the video because I was so scared to make the video because the more I used it, the more I was like, I don't know if it's worth the money, you know? So anyway, um, I've just decided, I don't care. If they never send me a device again, oh well. <laughs> I, 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 so that's the one thing um, with any any devices I get for review, like I'm very straight up, hey, you're sending me this, but whatever I say about it, this is like, you're not getting access to the video ahead of time. You're not gonna know my opinions. Like all of that stuff um, is my yeah. own. And so if, mm. if that ends up being a scenario where they don't mm. send me devices in the future, then for me, nothing changes because I'll just go back to where I used to be and, and I'll just buy them. Like it's, it's the same sort of scenario. So I, I for that part, yeah. I don't mind. Um, I love my 405M, so we're mm. gonna we're gonna have different opinions on that one. Um, but th but that's what's <laughs> we awesome have about this, right? On like, our hands. <laughs> but that's what's awesome about this is like is you have your opinions, yeah. you have my opinions, and then people can go and watch and and kind of take them from both and compare um, and and exactly. compare exactly and, and see what people are saying and um, yeah. But yeah, it's 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 definitely something that you have to be cognizant about. But as long as I, I think as long as you have um, integrity in, in what you're doing with the review and and you're not just taking a device so that you can give it a positive review, like that's that's where you lose me. And I'm not I'm not about that. Yeah. So, yeah, as long as you can kind of have that. And, and I think you do. I think Shem does like a, a lot of yeah. reviewers do. I, I don't I can't really name one that I think maybe doesn't do that, but. But yeah, so th that's kind of the, the way I look at it, at least. Yeah, I find Shem from Retro Breeze kind of hilarious because he he um, he just loves to get into like a fat moan about about a device, and I just love it. <laughs> like we um, we we chirp each other on Twitter quite a bit. Yes, I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, and he even said he he kind of might have fueled the flame on on a couple of devices over the last couple of years, but so oh well. Yeah, so I wanted to just shift gears now because we've been like rant, ranting about YouTube. I don't, I don't know how many people are actually going to be interested in that. Yeah, the behind the scenes stuff is sometimes fun. But yeah. what I wanted to ask you is um, how you sort of entered this niche. I think everyone got into it watching Russ, I'm sure. <laughs> but like how, yeah, what, I have a bit of like a little retro gaming origin story, you know, like where the passion began and all that. So, so how did you get into all this? Yeah, this one might be a, a little weird for people. So, um, I, I mean, I've I've been in games for a long, long time. Like, obviously, I think for, like most of us, it's uh, I've played all these games and I've been continuing playing them. But then um, I got into the retro handheld space with the RG three five three V, which was the the vertical okay. and with the sticks, and that was my first first handheld. And I'm like this is pretty good. And, and I went to go look at reviews and I'm looking at reviews and, and what I was doing with the device was different than what the reviews were saying. And it was like one example, like a quick example was um, people were showing game streaming on it and they were showing the native X cloud app. And I'm like, why are you using that? The other X cloud or the other um, Xbox app works and the triggers work and all of that. And so it kind of okay. led me down a rabbit hole of like, of like I'm, I'm not too happy with the information I'm getting. And, and I feel like I could add mm. something to this space by going a bit deeper. So that's when I made yeah. my very first video of uh, the RG 353 V, which I don't remember how long it took me, but it was a disaster. It took so long. Um, and then it just kept spiraling from there. And I'm like, I like this device a little bit. I don't like the sticks. And, and I kept making videos. And then I'm like, oh, look at the RG405M. I want that. And and then that launched me. Like that that specific device is what launched my whole channel because I have okay. setup guides on it. I have emulation showcases on it. Like I did a oh, whole cool. lot of d videos on it. Um, so yeah, so what got me in was, was the RG353V for whatever reason. And then mm. I just kept seeing devices like everybody else does and just kept going and going and going. Um, yeah. But I mean, the games, I just, I, I love having these different ways to play 
games and these devices that before joining the space i thought they were just kind of no name cheap brands like nothing there and then you get here and you're like no these are actually really good devices a lot of them are well made a lot of them are really really good and and it just becomes a a daily thing so um Mm. yeah i I jumped in because i just i saw kind of an area that i thought could use what i had to say and and it ended up working out i think yeah uh, definitely yeah um you know like my channel already had subscribers when i started I think I was about four and a half. So my channel's probably growing slower than most, I would say. But uh, yeah, no, you, you're doing really well. Um, yeah, I got into it by, um, I bought a, a junk, well, it, it was a clone of the Famicom and that's what I had as a kid. Oh, so I was really yeah. excited about this Father's Day gift it, and it took the, the cartridges so I thought I could start collecting cartridges. And then it broke because they shipped it from China with the wrong power supply. So it burnt out the CPU, which was just silly. So I didn't have this thing and I was quite upset. And then I realized all the stuff at the China mall was was like really cheap junk. And then I went online and I found Anbenic. So I got myself an RG350M. And okay. for me, I, I could never afford all these devices that everyone so loves. Like the PSP was huge in South Africa could never afford it. In the 80s, like a few of my sort of like wealthy friends had a Game Boy. And I just remember like all I wanted was a Game Boy. And so uh, <laughs> like for me, the Miu Mini Plus, I love this thing because it kind of feels like a Game Boy. And then I just put like a greed filter on the Game Boy games and it just, the nostalgia is just ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's the, the Miu Mini and, and RG35XX are awesome. But um, mm. yeah, growing up I had most of the Game Boys, I'm pretty sure, I think probably all of them, but PSP I never got into, the Vita I never got into, the Game Gear, like all that sort of thing is are things that I missed. Um, but mm. Game Boys, all the Nintendo kind of handhelds, yeah, uh, 100%. And so having a way to play those nowadays in with save states and um, not having to worry about all the other things that come with an like a old retro handheld like yeah Yeah. that's uh, i love it all like it's fantastic Mm. well interesting fact um is that so like in the in the states and canada nintendo and then obviously china i'm guessing in japan but nintendo was huge but in the outlying areas i I started to go down this rabbit hole because an icelandic friend of mine said to me you know that in outlying areas sony has always been king even in hand handholds and then I kind of looked it up and I realized like here in South Africa, like I don't remember, I don't remember the 2DS, I don't remember the 3DS. I remember the, 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 the DS Lite. That's yeah. the only Nintendo handle I remember after the Game Boy. But PSP was massive here. So I'm, for, for whatever reason, like import embargoes or whatever, I don't know, but, um, but that, that was massive here. I just picked one up uh, a few months back and I was going to do a whole video oh, yeah. and thing on it. Um, but then I got caught up with other things and I got to go back to it. But I got it from mm. Amazon Japan. It was a hundred Canadian dollars. So it wasn't too expensive. But mm. um, I want to see what I missed. Like I, I had, I've had the Vita like four times, but yes. the PSP is one that I've never had. And so I want to see yeah. what that actually looks like. Um, mm. So I'll get back around to it at some point. But um, it's a comfortable little device for sure. It is cool. Yeah, hit us up in the, like, if you're watching this, just let us know in the comments, because I'm, I'm I keen of keep jumping back and forth whether I should, I keep on seeing on Facebook Marketplace, like retro gaming handles, like I saw a 3DS the other day for a really good price. But I'm not sure if it's worth making videos on that stuff, just because, like, I'll just pick up, pick up my X28s and do everything that those <laughs> things do. So I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of in two minds about it. Yeah, the, the usual one is uh, it, you have to have an approach, right? Like for my my approach would be I've never had a PSP, so I could do a video on like what's my experience with the PSP. Mm, or yeah. a lot of what people do is, is the PSP worth it in 2023? Like that sort of thing. And you go down that, that YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. thumbnail or rabbit, rabbit hole a little bit. Um, but I think Taki already did that for this year. But either way, I mean, whatever mm. your kind of approach is to it, I think that's what you need. Like every every video has to have some sort of a story and you're telling a story. And, and so you're taking it from that approach of, yeah. of what can I bring to this device? Like what's uniquely me about this video and, and that sort of thing. 
yeah, I feel like I should do a vlog about buying a Game Boy and then tell the sad story about a South African boy who could never play Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally, at the age of 43, get a Game Boy. I mean, hey, it's it's unique, uh, right? It's to you. So yeah, um, you, mm. you never know if something will work to try it. And, and um, you learn that a lot doing YouTube for sure. So what are your favorite handles right now? Like retro gaming, you know, Anbenic, Parkity, those things. What, what are your favorite devices right now? So I have them right next to me. So I'll say I've, I made a video on the 35XX and the Miu Mini Plus. And in that video, I said I like the 35XX better. Yes. And then a few weeks ago, I was just sitting there and I'm like, I like retro achievements and I want to play some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And I reached for the Miu Mini Plus and I haven't looked back. So I might have to update yeah. that one. But yeah, so definitely mm. Miu Mini Plus, uh, 100%. And I use this specifically only for Game Boy, Game Boy Color games. Cool. And then... Recently, I was able to pick up the uh, 351P. It, this this thing is awesome. So I only use it for That's Game great. Boy Advance, and yes. for Game Excellent Boy Advance, it's been yeah, it's been perfect. And I've been playing this I think every day since I got it, uh, and mm. and I can't stop. Like it's just I put the Wi-Fi chip in, so I soldered it in, and it's on the back oh, well and done. all that sort of thing. Yeah, it was my first soldering job, and and I decided to use it for putting Wi-Fi. But I love that oh, thing. Cool. And then it's it's a great piece of hardware, don't you think? Don't you think it's masterfully crafted? It's just so well made. Oh no, this this is so comfortable. Like it's the mm. the feeling, the size, all of it. Like I mm. I'm impressed. Like I I wish that more devices were like this. Um, because yeah, they all try and reinvent the wheel when you could just just do this. Like this is perfect. Like you have the grips, mm. you have the comfort. I know a company that keeps reinventing the wheel, and it drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had one of those yet. I haven't tried one of those. The X28? Yeah. No, I haven't gotten one of those. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you'll like it. I like it. Me me and Shim, it's our favorite device right now. I think, so yeah. I I have a problem with bigger devices. I like the smaller ones. And as soon as you go bigger, I'm like, okay. I'm just going to pull out the ROG Ally or like a Steam Deck or something like that. But but that's why you don't like the X55. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the same thing. But so, yeah, ROG Ally, obviously, I've been playing that. And I have a, a GPD Win 4 coming, okay. which is supposed to come today, but we'll see. Uh, but besides those, mm. when we come to retro handhelds, the other two that I actually play a lot is the, and you, you don't like this one, but it's the 405M, of course, because um, I love it. I think it's a beautiful device. Oh, it's fantastic. Watch my video coming out this weekend. <laughs> Oh, well, well, this video is going to come out after Watch this. his video, yes. <laughs> um, I, mm. I love this thing. And then the, the PS. And I wish that they could combine into one because okay. if this had a T618 chip, I would be it would be my only device. Mm -hmm. that, would, that would be it. Really? I love this thing. but And that's, that's my four handhelds besides a Windows handheld. Yeah, I never bought the PS. I love the PS. It's so comfortable. Mm. It, it's, it's, yeah, this, this is like yeah. peak comfort for me. Um, just the ergonomics, everything. Yeah, I wonder... Do you think the 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 P is yeah. overpriced? Now, yes. Yeah, I think it is now. Yeah, because I really like it. I was going to make a video about it being the most underrated device of 2022, and things just got away from me, and now it's still sitting on my shelf. I made a few stories, uh, shorts on YouTube, but I haven't really... I don't know. I don't know if it's worth making a video about this now. Let me know in the comments if there's something you want to know. I've come this close to buying that one for the SNES look and mm -hmm. and um, and for mm. the the extra RAM and all that. But uh, I think I'm just going to mm. wait because I think Ambernick will probably do a T618 version and I'll I'll pick that one up. Yeah, that's well, that'll be your ultimate device, won't it? Yeah, all these devices blend together at some point. They're they're all just morph yeah. into one. Yeah, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the 405M. That that's that's been my standout this year. I love that device. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So I, I, I'm picking up a trend. I think you prefer more compact devices. Yeah, hundred percent. I I love having mm. the kind of portable, pocketable, smaller devices. That's 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 my thing. Cool. So our next video together will be arguing about big versus small devices. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, it, I yeah. I just my, love my, a big screen, man. I just dig it. I still can't get over it because as soon as I go something bigger than that can fit in my sling bag, I have to just go with the best device I can get, and and that's like the ROG mm. or or Steam Deck or the GPD or something along those lines. But um, yeah, that that's a problem I have to get over. <laughs> I think. No, I think it's a it's a perspective you have, and I, I I'm pretty sure there's other. I've had comments where people come from that line of thought, you know, 
they're like, well, you know, if you're going to get such yeah. a big device and it is that price, I may as well just save and get this. And I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you're not wrong. You know? <laughs> I might as well just save 10 times the amount and go buy an ROG Ally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's just my, my thing. I like the small, pocketable, portable devices. They're, they're awesome. Cool. So what do you do during the day? Are you full-time YouTube now? As of three or so weeks ago, yeah, now I am. Um, so oh, that's wow. p- probably why well you've done. seen a lot more devices co- or a lot of more videos mm. come out for me. Um, that's why I can't keep up with you. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you did your Android thing and I was like, I've been meaning to do that. Uh, and your video is just so good that I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna, even going to bother now. <laughs> Thanks. I, I have that issue with Russ because I'm like, I was I was out on, on the weekend um, I hate that. Yes. two weeks ago or something. I was out, uh, we went to mm. Edmonton and I was like, you know what I want to do a video on? I want to do a video on the Mew Mini Plus trading Pokemon with another Mew Mini Plus, the whole Pokemon trading thing. And I'm like, yes. I'm going to do this video as soon as we get back and, and all of that sort of thing. And then it was, this was Saturday and then Sunday happens and I see Russ's video and I'm like, all right. Sure. Thanks, Russ. But but I'm like, uh, I, yeah. I like that because I know I'm on the right track. I know that I was going to make a video that that was going to resonate with people, and then Russ got to it first. But for me, it's like, okay, I'm thinking the right way. Like I know what I'm doing. But it it, it sucks because yeah, you have to keep up. No, well, so like I've been doing YouTube for a while, like kind of just messing around, and um, well, to be honest, like I just have focus issues and so i've been like (laughs) chopping around so this is the first time that i've niched down and i'm actually doing well you know Mm -hmm. and the trend i have always seen is guys who do well they start out meaningful and then they kind of just lose the plots and they they don't get lazy they just lose focus and so i was like this is a great niche to get into because there's one big guy russ from retro game core he's going to get to 300,000 subscribers And he's kind of gonna just start doing all sorts of weird things. And the opposite is true. He's getting more and more focused. He's getting better at his craft. It's it's actually quite inspiring. He's um, Mm. he's definitely, I I think everybody's probably started watching, looking at his videos and all that. And it's inspiring Mm. that way. Like he hasn't changed focus. He hasn't changed who he is. He hasn't changed any of that through throughout all of his videos. And um, it's definitely good to see. And what's awesome too, is if you go and look back at his very first videos and, and just see how he started and, and, and all of those, you can see a, like a line of how he got better at it. Um, And it's cool to see. um, But but mm. yeah, definitely, it's definitely a niche that has room to grow, and, and we're growing quite quite big. Um, and there's more, there's room enough for I think more than one person at that stage as well. Because right mm. now it's kind of ETA in a little bit, but he does other things, and you have Taki, and then you yeah. have Russ, and then there's a, a big gap after that. And I think there's mm. a lot of room for more people to just come up. Um, and and it's been good to see everybody kind of growing. Yeah, I'm trying to find my voice, so I'm testing a few things out. So, um, like viewers can kind of give me some input on that. Is so, I I've been, I have the and the videos that have done the best are the sort of things that you've been recently releasing lately, like my Ultimate RG three five X six setup guide, and then I I went too all in on the when I got my Retro Pocket three plus, I was super excited. Like I really like this device, yeah. and so I went too deep down the rabbit hole. So that video, I was like leave no stone unturned. So whenever I saw a question, I was like, I will answer this in the video, I will answer. This. And so I made like an, an hour and a half video explaining everything, setting up Android, setting up RetroArch, it was too extreme. And then I, so now I'm guiding, I, I just point people to that because that is my sort of ultimate Android setup guide, but yeah. I just went too deep on the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. But I don't know, I feel like I am quite expressive So I feel like I need to lean into that somehow. So I feel like I'm somewhere between, I've been watching a little bit of um, Bob from uh, Wolf Den. And uh, I feel like I'm somewhere between between him and Russ, you know, sort of like a little bit cocky and like, you know, brash. And then I I like the nerdy stuff as well. So I I need to find my voice and I, I haven't quite done that yet. Yeah, uh, it, it's tough, right? Like it's it's uh, 
YouTube especially, like trying to differentiate from even other YouTubers from different niches and then in your own niche and, mm. and all that, like it's, it's not easy to, to do that. But um, I think if you make the videos that you want and, and that you like and all that, at some point you'll find your audience and that'll grow. Uh, that's, that's my firm belief is, is I'm going to continue making videos the way that I want to do them. And I'll say Mario as in Mario sometimes and, and people laugh at me because I say Mario instead of Mario and, and I'll have my little quirks and all that but like that's 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 just me and 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 people will gravitate towards that or they won't and and we'll see how that goes but um at the end of the day i want to look back and say hey i made that video and i like that video and and other people ended up liking it too but that's that's kind of how i want to do it yeah but that that, you know it's it's like you talk about the like pronunciation stuff (laughs) i mean i'm south african and most of my view actually funny enough it's america and philippines we did weirdly enough i'm not sure where the philippines fall in but (laughs) i don't know if there's a lot of english people there or because i I doubt they anyway so those are my two main viewers and i don't get a lot of people commenting on my accents um every now and again i'll get some south african living in america going Hey, South African, yay, and th- th- that's all I get. I never get people saying, oh, he says y'all or something, you know, it's, it's, it's a testament to the community, I think, hey? I, I get it, I get it. I, I don't know if it, I don't think it's one every video, but I, I got it for the Mario Mario thing. I've gotten it for, and I still, I still can't remember how to say this, but uh, executable or um, like an EXE on, a, on Windows. Um, I said that wrong in the past and even my wife makes fun of me for that one. <laughs> but like it, it, it I don't just... know how to say it either, man. An EXE file. I've never said the whole word. Ex- yeah, I'm going to have to file. just say EXE Executable going forward because it, it saves me a lot oh, of shit. headache. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> <laughs> exactly. I've never said it before and then in a video I said it multiple times and end up getting crucified for And then he just got slammed. <laughs> but I, I, I do feel like the Americans love to criticize Canadians. It's Probably. a thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know, because I mean, I've watched, like I said in, uh, before we started, uh, I've watched a lot of Canadian YouTubers and they just get a lot of flack from Americans for saying things slightly differently. And I'm like, crap, if I start a YouTube channel, the Americans are going to slaughter me and they haven't. So <laughs> they obviously just have an issue with you guys. Yeah, you're lucky. It's the, they keep coming after us Canadians and we have to duck and hide. Um, but yeah. And uh, actually the, the one blunder I did was my very first video. I said retro, retro game corpse. Cause I had never, I don't okay. know why I even said it that way, but it, it's, it's retro game core, of course. And, and for some reason I said it retro don't game speak against the great Russ. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got the, I got the Russ, um, the Russ army in my comments. It's retro game corp, uh, or retro game core. And I uh, did, but yeah, you live and learn uh, certain things. I'm just never going to be oh, able fine. to do. Who cares, but, man? Who cares? Like I remember watching a video and Russ was like, I say retro arc. It's wrong, but I'm just going to keep saying it. So I was like, no, well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's tough. I mean, we have our own little quirks in the way we say things, and I can't keep correcting every single thing. It's tough. I'll, I'm going to miss it a lot of times, and I just live, I roll with it yeah. at that point. It's fine. <laughs> cool, Joey. That's been really cool chatting. Um, it's like the main reason I'm, I, I think it's mostly selfish reasons. I feel like I just want to feel connected to this community. And uh, yeah, just, pick your brain a little bit, hear what you're up to. And um, like from my side, I, you're crushing it, man. Like your, your videos Thanks. are doing really well. Um, and it, it's, it is definitely from, my, like as a, from an analytical point of view, um, giving me a, a data point to know like those deep dive videos really do work, you know? Um, and you're like, I think your channel specifically is testament to that because like you say, what did you say? Like three weeks ago, you went full time? And uh, you're putting effort into all these um, tutorials and that, and it's it's really really paying off. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's been a, a fun four months, I guess. I started in April. Four um, months. Oh, April second okay. was my first video. So yeah, it's been a. I've, I've learned cool. a lot, like learning mm. how to film, all, all of it, editing, all of it. It's it's so daunting, but. Um, Mm. it's been fun. Like you put something new in every video and you keep going and, um, and I've been enjoying yeah. it and, and I love seeing your stuff. Like I love, I love your, your shots. I love your, your takes. I love your content too. So, um, I hope that you continue oh, doing it man. and, um, I hope that you find whatever, like you're specifically liking to do like what, cause I know you're trying to figure it out, but whatever you settle on, like I'm excited to see what that looks like. Cool. Thanks, Jerry. Cool, man. Thanks. And thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.